Hello, this is Brian again. Welcome to the next part. So, I kept going straight, and I am getting all the way to where the to where there's this real big drainage ditch. I remember, I've never gone that far before. So, there's a big sharp turn about a tenth of a mile before that. It's like, this is not familiar. I don't remember crossing a big drainage ditch. So, there's a fence. What you'll see is you'll see another trail coming up to meet it at a hard angle or an acute angle. And you'll see a little, like a little fence, like a four foot fence that's on the side laying on the ground. So, to continue making the loop. You're going to have to make a hard left there. So I remember, eventually it's going to cut across the meadow area. And, and I passed by it first, forgetting that that was where I was supposed to cut off. To make the loop out of this. So. <laughs> it goes to show. You can, be, you can go to a place many times. Many times and still mess it up, <laughs> which is what I did today. That's all right. Because there are a lot of use trails that cut through these meadows that are, you know, traffic, well trafficked by people. They're not just game trails, they're actually whole footpaths that they're trying to keep people out of now. You'll see periodic signs that say, stay on trail. Which is, you know, being here in a state park, they're going to have rules about, sometimes rules about, you know, staying on trail, no cross-country travel. So, when that's in the equation, I do my best to stay on the trail. I'll step off the trail maybe about 15 feet when uh, somebody's passing by for, for social distancing purposes. But here in the state park, they want you to stay on the trail, which is my full intention. It's just uh, not realizing that that was my junction, that I was going to have to make a, a hard left. And we're we're in the we're in the Pacific Ponderosa Pines now. And we also had Jeffrey Pines here in Palomar too. I'm not sure if they get into the state park portion but I have seen them above Fry Creek Fry Creek campground not like right at the campground but you'll take a trail that leads kind of northish out of the back side of the campground and uh, if you get up, go up on this ridge you'll see some uh, you'll see some Jeffrey pines on that side so we got both Ponderosa and Jeffrey here that over, over there is Cleveland National Forest. This is the state park right here. I don't know if there are any Jeffrey Pines in the state park. I haven't seen them in the state park yet. But all in all, it's a very, very peaceful walk. Not coming across scores of people. Probably because nobody, not too many people really legit wanted to get wet. But there are people out, probably enjoying it before it gets gets really hot again. Though I don't think it'll get quite as hot up here. It'll be more of a lowland thing. Well, I'm coming up, coming across the Two Fork Ponderosa, right there. I always remember passing that tree. But, these aren't nearly the tallest Pacific Ponderosas I've seen here in Southern California. I've seen some gigantically tall ones. Before. Oh god, I might have to put the mask on. There are people coming up. See when we get up to them. Thank you. 
So, we're coming up on the, the largest ones here, and they actually have the smaller bark plates, more diamond shaped bark plates that some of the larger ponderosas get. Whew. All right. There we go. There's a the large one right there. That one's got multiple leaders. The trail doesn't go quite close enough to really appreciate it super close at hand, I don't think. But, again, they do get quite large here. Some of these are probably about, some of these are probably closer to 100, 150 feet tall, some of them. Okay, here we are at another junction. We're going to go ahead right here. Yeah, it's the lower. This is where we're on the lower Doan Trail now. So we're starting to wrap around for the loop. So actually, we do get close to the tree. What we're going to do is we're going to go through a lusher spot fairly soon that was half burnt in fire and half not burnt. But. There we go. Fire here, I think, was a fire that went through this portion here was more of a ground fire. If it were a crown fire, Ponderosa probably wouldn't have survived. <clears throat> so this is a quite girthy tree. These trees are a bit taller, but they're not quite as girthy. So there you go. Penis Ponderosa subspecies Benthamiana. This is the one I've passed quite a few times here and always enjoyed seeing this tree. You gotta be careful it's drizzling again. That's why I put the breaker on. It's not because it's cold. It's nice and delightfully cool outside, that's for sure. It's probably in the 50s, but I didn't want my shirt to get soaking wet. Since my beanie got all dirty and stuff, I had to put it in another part of my backpack, so my hair's a little damp right now, but it doesn't feel too bad. I'm gonna say. Then when we get to this side. We're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna start losing the pines pretty soon, for the most part, and it's gonna become more incense cedar white fir again. So it's gonna turn back into incense cedar white fir. As you can see, when you saw my earlier clips on the Dome Valley Nature Trail, there were really no signs of any burning there. Fire suppression. And all that over there, that's all western bracken fern. I was thinking maybe some of the shrubs were starting to color, but that was not the case. This camera's starting to get a little wet, so I'm going to have to wipe it off a little bit. So forgive me for this. But I just don't want to ruin this camera. So, so if you come over here, What does it say here? It's just under a mile to get back to Dome Pond from here. Over here, this will take you to the historical weir. It's like a little stone structure above the, the creek. And I guess it's only 0.1 mile away. Never actually been to it before. Usually I just, usually I'm going back that way, to, back towards Dome Dome Pond and where my car is, but let's go ahead and head over there. It's only 0.1 miles, so it doesn't hurt to add a little extra something. So as long as I don't ruin my <laughs> ruin my camera, it is getting quite wet. Don't want to have to buy another camera. 
again for a while. I think this plant here is Western Vervain. I think this is Verbena lasiostacus, I believe. I believe that's what that is. I'll look it up and uh, post a confirmation of it. If I confirm that it is. Or if I confirm that it's something else. But, and we've got a lot of mugwort here. Artemisia douglasiana. And we also got wild rose here. Looks like probably Rose of Californica. And this looks like Rubus ursinus, California bramble, or California blackberry. Let's see. Get around here without soaking my pants. My pants are pretty wet. And, oh yeah. Starting to get some red, some reddish color on the western choke cherries over here. So that's nice to see. A lot of times they'll turn yellow, but I guess some of them get quite a reddish hue on them, which is always something nice to see. Whew. Should be coming up on it pretty soon. The historical weir. It's like a little dam or something. I've never actually been to it. The amount of times I've been here to Palomar Mountain State Park, I've never gone to the little historic weir. Don't know really a lot of the history behind it, to be honest with you. But I could always maybe look it up or something, but just never made the trip over there to see it. It's a little sketchy over here. It's a little wet. Oh boy. So pardon me if I have to wipe the camera lens a few times. Really don't want it to get ruined and wet. Another different type of willows down here too. Sometimes I have trouble telling my willows apart. I might mention that. But we're getting some more colors showing up over here on the Prunus Virginia on variety of Demissa, the western choke cherry down here is starting to color more. And they're getting more of a, an orangish hue, which is pretty cool. It's nice to see that. Okay, let's see where this little weir is. Should be coming up really soon because it's only a tenth of a mile according to the sign. So let's see. Trying to be careful though. My pants are starting to get quite wet. I've gone through a lot of uh, grasses and willows and shrubs along the way here. Creek dogwood starting to color here too. Cornicericea subspecies occidentalis. That's what that kind of purplish color is. Creek dogwood right there. The other similar looking shrub, the western burning bush, turns more of a kind of a clear yellow in the fall. But creek dogwood changes multiple colors. I'm gonna keep following this. In the next part, I should be at the weir. So I'll see you on the next.